Make your presence known in this place. Through our worship, our prayer, the reading of your word, and in the fellowship we shall enjoy. Amen. And we'll continue to gather our community with the singing of hymn number 310. Sing praise to God who reigns above. Like the dew that goes away early, have mercy. 
mercy on us, deliver us from judgment, by our wounds, and revive us. In Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God, who sent Jesus Christ into the world to save sinners, bring us pardon and peace now and forever. Amen. Amen. We pray the collect of the day. Inviting God, lay open your table to those without status or power. And setting a place for the foreign and the unwanted, overturn our tables of power and teach us to receive bread from strange and wounded hands. Through Jesus Christ the Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the proclamation of the word. A reading from the book of Jeremiah. Hear, O Lord, hear the word of Lord. O host of Jacob and all the families of the host of Israel, thus says the Lord, what wrong did your ancestors find in me that they went far from me and went after worthless things and became worthless themselves? They did not say, where is the Lord who brought us from the land of Egypt? who led us in the wilderness, in a land that no one passes through, where no one lives. I brought you into a peaceful land to eat its fruits and its good things. But when you entered, your, you defiled my hand, land and made my heritage an abomination. The priests did not say, where is the Lord? Those who handle the law did not know me. The rulers transgressed against me. The prophets prophesied by Baal and went after things that they do not profit. Therefore, once more, I accuse you, says the Lord, and I accuse your children's children. Cross into the coast of Cyprus and look. Send to Kedar and examine with care. See if there has ever been such a thing. Has the nation changed its gods, even though they are no gods? But my people have changed their glory for something that does not profit. Be appalled. O oh, heavens, at this, be shocked, be utterly desolate, says the Lord, for my people have committed two evils. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living water, and dug out cisterns for themselves, cracked cisterns that can hold no water. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm is in your bulletin. We will read responsibly. Sing with joy to God our strength, and raise a loud shout to the God of Jacob. I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, and said, Open your mouth wide, and I will fill it with blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and And yet my people did not hear my voice, and Israel would not obey me. So I gave them over to the stubbornness of their hearts, to follow their own vices. Oh, that my people would listen to me, that Israel would walk in my ways. I should soon subdue their enemies and turn my hand against their foes. Those who hate the Lord would cringe before me, and their punishment would last forever. But Israel will not feed with the finest wheat, and satisfy them with the honey of the rocks. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was at the beginning, is now. Our gradual hymn is hymn number 500, Sister, Let Me Be Your Servant.
be with you. And also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. On one occasion, when Jesus was going to the house of a leader of the Pharisees to eat a meal on the Sabbath, they were watching him closely. When he noticed how the guests chose the places of honor, he told them a parable. When you are invited by someone to a wedding banquet, do not sit down at the place of honor in case someone more distinguished than you has been invited by your host, and the host who invited both of you may come and say to you, give this person your place. And then in disgrace, you would start to take the lowest place. But when you are invited, go and sit down at the lowest place, so that when your host comes, he may say to you, friend, move up higher. Then you will be honored in the presence of all who sit at the table with you. For all who exalt themselves will be humbled. And those who humble themselves will be exalted. He said also to the one who had invited him, when you give a luncheon or a dinner, do not invite your friends or your brothers or your relatives or rich neighbors in case they may invite you in return and you would be repaid. But when you give a banquet, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame and the blind, and you will be blessed because they cannot repay you for you will be repaid at the resurrection of the righteous. This is the Gospel of Christ. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. May my words and our meditations be now and always acceptable to you, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Amen. As I read the Gospels, Jesus' whole life is centered on inviting into the presence of God those who neither expect nor feel they deserve such an invitation. And much of his time was spent gathered around a time of eating and storytelling. He ate with those shunned by society, and he ate with those who held places of authority in that same society. He ate at banquets that included several courses. He ate on hillsides where a couple of fish and some rolls were multiplied into a feast for all. He ate with friends and he ate with enemies. And while he ate, he asked questions and told parables that stayed with people long after the gathering. I think today's gospel is a great example. He's at the home of a religious leader and he warns of the dangers of being totally shamed by sitting at a place reserved for someone more important. And then he turns to the host and admonishes him for not, uh, to not invite those who can repay the invitation. I don't think it's exactly how you win friends and influence people. So why is this so important to Jesus? I believe that he's inviting the listener then and now to move out of the cultural quid pro quo, many of us uh, start to see, uh, I'm sorry, the way of many cultures, and to start to see and live into the vision God has for God's people. A vision that includes a place for everyone to share their gifts, ideas, and yes, even love. I believe he's pointing out to the, he's pointing to the error of scarcity thinking. There's only so much. I better protect what I have. I better salt away in case uh, my kids don't look after me when I get old. And ensuring our future by connecting to people who can help us stay in our societal place. Or maybe even climb higher. Despite the market crash of 1929, and the later echoes through the last century. Despite the floods, forest fires, and drought that can change our world in a nanosecond, we still tend to think that if we can only play the Western world, world game, we can find happiness 
and certainly more and more, wealth, and more, and more wealth and prestige. But what if we could adopt Jesus' way of radical hospitality, deep listening, and storytelling? What if we truly pursued humility and inclusion? How might we discover abundant living? mercy and grace? How might we find a whole new way of being what Jesus calls the kingdom? In 2008, I had the wonderful opportunity and privilege of having a three-month sabbatical in a place that truly practiced radical hospitality. For three months, I lived with 25 to 35 people at any given time. The people came from a real hodgepodge of backgrounds. And many of them who were there for a long time were there because they were trying to survive a life that was centered in addiction or mental illness or uh, incarceration or other kind of life problems. It was, for me, the most life-giving, almost miraculous place I could imagine. And until COVID, I kept going back there on a regular basis because I kept thinking, can this hold? And for six decades, it has held. And it has held not because of the, any individuals who are there, but because it has taken on a culture of being a place where everybody is respected, their privacy is respected, but they share the common life, and they help each other as they are able. It's not a huge, big, complicated formula. Throughout my decades of ordained ministry, I've regularly asked myself, how can Christian communities encourage and model this way of being? So, it's summer. And I think that summer is one of the four seasons, the other being fall, winter, spring, that stories and poetry and music are more likely to enter ourselves than me standing here doing a lot of talking at you. And so I'd like to tell you a story. I will not subject you to my singing, but I will, um, but I will tell you the words of a song I want to share, and I will share a poem with you because I think that will help us get at the uh, whole, whole thing that we're trying to get at in this gospel. So the story, I would bet that 70% of you out there when I start this story will say, oh, I know this one, I could tell this. It's a story that's been around a long time. And I've adapted it a little for the, for the present place. There was a small town, had a university, had some farms around the edges. It had a wide variety of people living in it. And among those people were several foreign students who came to the university to study. And it was February, spring break. And those foreign students that had started out uh, because their families had scraped and scraped and scraped for them to go to Canada and do this, were getting very low on cash. And because they were getting low on cash, they were also getting low on food and wondering how they would survive until they could get some work. And one day, one of them said, I have a plan. Let's take one of those big pots from the cafeteria and go down to that community oven spot and start a bonfire. Let's put some water in the pot. All right, do you think it will help? So down they went, water in the pot, bonfire going, and one of them takes a big stone and smooths it off, gives it a kiss, and blesses it. And as people are gathering, say, what's the fire in the middle of town? They look at him and say, what are you doing? And he said, why, well, I'm making some community stone soup. All right. And what are you going to put in it? He said, this beautiful stone I found. It'll make wonderful stone soup. <laughs> right, yeah, okay. What culture is he from? Okay. So he put the stone in the pot and he started to stir 
and stir and stir. And people looked around and said, oh, said so how's it coming? And he said, well, just a minute. And he took out his spoon and he tasted it. He said, this good needs a little salt and pepper. And it could, it could benefit from a carrot or two. And someone smirked and said, okay, I'll go get a carrot. Let's see how we can play this out. And he went and got a carrot. And he stirred and stirred and he said, hmm. Yeah, I suppose any of you might have a little bit of cabbage, little cabbage leaves hanging around. Yeah, okay, I've got some cabbage leaves. And so it went. Somebody had some turnip. Somebody else had some withered beans that they were planning to throw out anyway. Someone else said, you know, I've got this old turkey carcass in my, uh, in my freezer. It's wrapped in cheesecloth. We could toss that in. And so they got the turkey carcass. And so it went. Someone else had some frozen tomatoes. And so the bubble and bubbled, and people started to tell one another stories. Where are you from? What do you know? What brought you to this town? And someone said, you know, that oven will work in the winter. We don't use it um, past November, but it'll work in the winter. And someone said, well, if we started the oven, we could make bread. And so they started the oven. Somebody went and put flour and yeast and water. And they made these lovely little rolls and put them in the oven. And when the rolls were finished, the soup was ready. And the foreign students looked around and said, well, folks, go get a bowl and dig in. And before long, the whole square was filled with laughter and song and stories and full stomachs. And community was built. And hospitality was understood. So, I came across a poem that if I were asking, saying, what is it and why is it that Jesus wants us to learn this? And this poem by a man named Michael Coffey um, is, I don't think it's a title, but I really thought it turned the parable on its end. It was like this. She entered the party like a caged, like a caged queen, her heels lifting her to thinner air, almost to where she wanted to be. She saw the table spread with boutique finery, charcuterie, artisanal cheeses and duck liver pate, red and white and bubbling wine for every course. She approached the gathering and saw at the far end the out-of-fashioned, the rough-handed, the wrong-spoken, the servants and migrants who picked the butter lettuce. On the near end, she saw the well-labeled suits, handbags of pure leather and metal clasps. That look of confidence in the eyes of the highly educated. She saw one chair near her with those of the kind of her kind. She sat and mingled and sipped wine and laughed controllably and knew which fork to use with the appetizer. The host came and thanked her for taking a seat at this end and assured her with a warm voice that someday she too could join him at the other end. Thomas Merton, the great contemplative theologian and peacemaker, who was a prolific writer, uh, spent a good part of his adult life as a hermit. And, and through that, he felt his prayer life connected him with the world. But there was within him a longing to somehow get a glimpse of a greater, of, a, of kind of God's image for this. And one day, he was standing on a corner in Louisville, Kentucky, and he looked up and around, and it was as though the scales fell from his eyes, and he saw the whole area through the eyes of Christ. And he saw the people were almost glowing, some of them. And, and he saw them with the purity of absolute love. 
And he got what Jesus was trying to say. I actually met someone not long ago who had an experience like that in downtown Montreal. I would love to say I've had that experience. I haven't. But I did come close once. I was, I was in a congregation and I was administering communion. I was administering the, the bread. And in that congregation, people formed a line and came, received the bread, and then went over to the other side, received the wine, and went, then went back to where they were seated. And as I started to administer the bread, the, uh, the church musician who had, has a beautiful, clear, almost boys' choir voice began to sing a song called At This Table. I want to read you the lyrics of this, of this song. And if you want to hear it, you can go on YouTube and just plug in At This Table. At this table, everyone is welcome. At this table, everyone is seen. At this table, everybody matters. No one falls between. At this table, you can say whatever. At this table, you can speak your mind. At this table, everything is forgiven. There's enough for everyone. So come as you are. Remember that the door is always open. Yes, come as you are. The perfect gift that you could bring is your heart. So come, come as you are. At this table, there will be no judgment. At this table, mercy has a seat. At this table, we're all sons and daughters. There's no place I'd rather be. So come as you are. Remember that the door is always open. Come as you are. The perfect gift that you could bring is your heart. Come, come as you are. At this table, everyone is welcome. At this table, everybody cares. At this table, everybody matters. So come, pull up a chair. I think that's what we're talking about. And she sang that song, and I handed a wafer, repeatedly saying, the body of Christ broken for you, the body of Christ, the bread of heaven, the body of Christ, bread for your journey. I looked out at the line of people, and for a tiny, not even a nanosecond, saw that those people through the eyes of Christ and felt so, so privileged to be there. So privileged to be part of a group of people with all our warts and scars and needs and so on that are attempting to live a kingdom life in a culture that really thinks that's pretty irrelevant, but that we know is critical to being who we are. I've asked Meg and Cameron if they will put on a link to a, a video by a woman named uh, Ramona Butterfield. I've got the first name wrong, but anyway. Uh, she's done a series of really incredible, short, five, seven minute videos on Christian hospitality that really assure us and challenge us and lead us, I think, into some good places. Soon we'll start a new year here at St. John's. And we will have opportunity to meet foreign students, to meet one another, to smile at people who may be feeling very lost on the street. May we go forward and eagerly greet them and get to know them and form relationship, whether it's over stone soup, a coffee, an invite to dinner, uh, a smile in the grocery store. May God be with us, and may God guide us.
for many years. The community of Iona has been a place of hospitality for pilgrims from all over the world. And it seems particularly fitting today that we would use an affirmation of faith from there. So I invite you to stand as you're able and as you join in as you are able. We believe in God above us, maker and sustainer of all life, of the sun and the moon, of water and earth. We believe in God beside us, Jesus Christ, the Word made flesh, born of a woman, servant of the poor, tortured and hailed of the tree, a man of sorrows, he died forsaken. He descended into the earth to the place of death. On the third day he rose from the tomb. He ascended into heaven to be everywhere present, and his kingdom will come on earth. We believe in God within us, the Holy Spirit of Pentecostal fire, life-giving breath of the church, spirit of healing and forgiveness, source of resurrection and eternal life. Shout aloud to God of Jacob. Begin the music, strike the timbrel, play the melodious harp and lyre. Sound the ram's horn at the new moon. This is a decree for Israel, an ordinance of the God of Jacob. I heard a voice say, I removed the burden from their shoulders. Their hands were set free from the basket. In your distress you called, and I rescued you. I answered you out of a thundercloud. Now let us offer our prayers to the Lord. After the bidding, Lord, hear our prayer, we will respond, Lord, graciously hear us. Let us pray for the peace of the world. Lord, grant that we may live together in justice and faith. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, graciously hear us. Let us pray for this country, and especially for Queen Elizabeth, the Governor General, the Prime Minister, and for all in authority. Lord, help them to serve all people according to God's holy will. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, graciously hear us. Let us pray for children and young people as thoughts turn to a new academic year. Lord, guide their growth and development. We pray for those preparing to welcome back students. Help them to feel excitement and joy in the promise of a new start. In our cycle of prayer, we pray for the staff and students of the University of King's College, Halifax, and King's Edgehill School, Windsor. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, gracious Let us pray for the sick. Lord, deliver them and keep them in his love. We pray for those known to us, those named in our bulletin, and those known only to you. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, gracious hear us. Let us pray for all who are condemned to exile, prison, harsh treatment, or hard labor for the sake of justice and truth. We pray for those who are not safe. Lord, support them and keep them steadfast. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, gracious hear us. We remember the prophets, apostles, martyrs, and all who have borne witness to the gospel. In our cycle of prayer, we remember the Anglican Church of Aotearoa, New Zealand, and in Polynesia. We also pray for the staff and students of the Atlantic School of Theology, Halifax. We pray for our Rector Nicole, our Associate Bruce, and all clergy. 
with thanks today for Lynn. Lord, direct all our lives in the same spirit of service and sacrifice. Lord, hear our prayer. Our Lord, Jesus. Jesus. Whether we are given thanks and praise in the new moon or asking for help in our human distress, we pray to know your love is with us. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. As part of our operatory, we will have um, a musical selection by um, Martin and Amelia. Sing with grace in your heart.
other things. I'm not going to say moving up or to greater, but, but doing different things. And it seemed appropriate that we were talking about food today because Alec is headed off to Holland College to the culinary arts. Okay, you come up here, Alec. Thank you. And so we have a, a short service that you'll find in your bulletin, a blessing to send him on his way. And uh, I will ask the Lord, Mr. The church community is constantly changing. New folks move into the neighborhood while other life coaxes others to move on from this place. Individual come and go in our parish life. It is important and right that we recognize these times of passage, of endings and beginnings. Today we share a time of farewell to Alec, whose time as a member of our choir is coming to an end. Alec, today we offer our heartfelt thanks for your presence and ministry among us. We are deeply grateful to God for you, for the gifts of music you have shared with us, for deepening our worship life, and for all we have accomplished in this parish with your help. When you leave this parish, know that our prayers go with you. And I invite you to join in with me in this next section. Let us remember that wherever we go, God goes before us. You, O oh God, will guard us from all evil. You will, you will protect, protect our lives. lives. You will protect our going out and our coming in, both, both now and forevermore. Where can I flee from your spirit? Or where can I flee from your presence? If I take the wings of the morning, and dwell in the depths of the sea. Even there, your hands shall lead me. Your hands shall hold me fast. Well, Alec, I don't know if you want to say anything, or if you'd rather just not. I didn't ask you to prepare anything. You don't have to. Okay. He's, this is new. <laughs> So, let us ask God's blessing on Alec as he begins his next adventure in culinary arts at Holland College, with his opportunities and his challenges. Whatever life holds for him, may he go forth, trusting in our love and prayers for him and God's guidance along the way. So I'm going to invite you to stand and extend, um, if it weren't COVID, I'd be saying, Alec, come up and put your hands on Alec. So, in your mind, that's what we're doing. We're putting our hands on Alec. We praise and thank you, God, for Alec as he has for the Lord. We thank you for our time together and for the commitment and the joy that you have brought to our life together for more than a decade. Now we trust him into your life together knowing that you are always a faithful traveler and a companion on the way, shelter and protecting from all harm and anxiety, filling with joy about the new opportunities that await him, and make him safely to his journey's end, through Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. I don't know if I can reach you. <laughs> God's blessing be yours, and may well befall you. Christ's blessing be yours, and may, may you be kept. Spirit's blessing be yours, and well may you spend your life, each day that you rise up, each night that you lie down. Amen. Amen. And now, uh, this is a little hand cross. So you know, they feel lovely to touch. To remind you of who you are as you go. So may you go in peace, and let God go with you. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. And we have a card. If you haven't signed it, sign it before you leave. Thank you. You're allowed to go back to your seat now. <laughs> of those with whom we journey. So be swift to bless, be ready to be kind, and may the blessing of God 
eternal Father, Holy, Holy Word, and Holy Spirit be with you. Now. Amen. Amen. There are just a couple of announcements, and uh, uh, we're really excited about the project you, you, that, that's happening in the parish over creation season. Uh, Mary McMillan and Ron Stewart and Nicole uh, have developed a, are developing a four by four banner that will uh, be the burning bush, and it will be made with all of your hands. So out back, there's paper, and you're asked to draw, open your hand and draw it around, and then it's going to be put in fabric, and a, and a beautiful banner is going to be made that will hang through. Uh, through the time of, of the creation season, which starts next week. So please participate in that. And next week is the first Sunday of the month. So there will be coffee and uh, goodies, nibblies, at 9 o'clock. So the 8 o'clock folks can join with the 10 o'clock people and have a time of, of sharing stories and getting to know one another at deeper levels. Uh, our closing hymn is 3, 4.30. Will you come and follow me? <laughs>